Today I'm going to show you my favorite online dictionary. It is called Word Reference. There are lots of online dictionary resources. This one is my favorite for looking up words in French or Spanish or any other language. So you go to wordreference.com and then you make sure that you are in the right language. So you can translate from English to French, French to English, you can translate into Spanish, you can even do French to Spanish and vice versa. You can flip it around. Um, anything that you are looking up, you should be able to find the right language for it. So I'm going to look up a random word, platypus. Um, you can look and see that platypus in French is ornithorynque. Now, if you are not very strong at pronunciation, you're not sure how to say that weird looking word, you'll click on ornithorynque and you can listen to it right here. So if you click this little symbol, you can hear what it sounds like pronounced. You could repeat it in practice. Um, when I am looking up a word, the correct translation is right here. And then you can see that it is a masculine word. So it would be un ornithorank if you have just one of them. Um, this one's pretty simple because there's only one word for platypus. You can also look and see that when you Google or when you look it up on word reference, it's a noun. So it's a person, place, or thing. You can see right here that it's masculine. Um, let's do something more difficult. So if I look up the word in, in can have a lot of different meanings in English and in French um, or in any other language. It is a preposition. So when I look up in, this little word here means it's a preposition. It shows um, where things are located, their position in a sentence. Uh, if I'm looking for the word in, meaning like inside, like I left your book in the car, it's going to be don. Uh, however, there's lots of different translations of in. Maybe I want to say I'm going to travel in France. Well, here it says that on is a preposition used in front of a feminine country, a feminine continent, so it's in with a geographical place. Um, there are lots and lots, if you scroll through, ways to say in in both languages. Word reference is really helpful for you to find the right one. You can scroll and see, oh, in a certain season, inside. There are many resources there. Uh, let's do a verb. So I just picked a random verb to clean. You can see that the first word I got was the adjective clean, meaning like my house is clean. I don't want that one. I want something with a V. It is a verb, to wash, to sanitize, nettoyer is to clean. But you might have cleaning your room. You're not, organize, you're not sanitizing your room. You're organizing it. The word ranger would work better. Um, to clean something off. So as you can see, word reference has lots of different ways to translate the word clean. And one cool thing is maybe you're not sure how to conjugate the verb. You can click on this little arrow here and it gives you all the conjugations of the verb enlever. So you can see that it's a stem changing verb. It's an ER verb. You can see how to put it in the past tense. I think that the conjugating tool on word reference is very useful. Uh, a couple more just to show you. Let's say that you want to say, hang in there. Sometimes it will give you a whole phrase, like courage. Um, but usually, for me, it's most helpful if I just look up one word at a time. And then I use control F. I hit the word control. I hit the control button and the letter F. And then I type in what I'm looking for so that I can find it really fast. Hang in there, courage, because I don't have time to scroll through this whole thing. So if you hit control F, you should be able to find what you need much more quickly. Um, a couple more. Let's say that I want to know how to say sliced bread, and I scroll through. They have all sorts of ways to say bread over here on the left. Um, but one thing that I used a lot when I was looking for specific words is down here, there are whole forums about how to say banana bread. Um, bread that's used in cakes? I don't know. Bread riot? That sounds interesting. Um, but let's say, oh, cheesy garlic bread. So I can use the forums if I scroll all the way to the bottom. If I can't find something up at the top, chances are somebody has asked about sliced bread before, and you can figure out that it means pain tranché. Uh, the last word I want to show you 
Sometimes you can use word reference to find slang even. So let's say I'm looking up shade. I want to know how to say to throw shade. To throw shade on somebody, to belittle or disparage them is critique. And I can again click that little arrow to see how to conjugate critique correctly. The last thing I want to show you real quick is why I prefer word reference over something like Google Translate. If I look for platypus again, it's ornithorhynque, but I don't know if it's masculine or feminine, so that's not actually helpful. If I want to look up the word in, they do have different forms, but I really don't know which one to use in front of a feminine country. It doesn't give me quite as much information as word reference did. Let's say I want to say hang in there. That literally means to like hang on to something like hang off of that edge of a cliff. You've got it. That's not as helpful as the phrase courage, which is what people would actually say. And then I thought this was funny. Let's say throw shade. That's not slang at all. That's literally the word throw and then shade like under a tree. If you told a French person that you were jeter l'ombre on somebody, they would be very confused. So I hope that that is helpful and has convinced you a little bit of why word reference is a really good tool to use when you are translating words.